So I did not know that I had written the first single, Pull You Through, when we wrote it. Larry, Brother Love, had just married my drummer and music leader, one of my best when friends, Sarah Tomek. And I, at the time, was engaged and was about to be married in a few months, so it felt appropriate for three people who are very close to write a song or celebrating that. And we really want to write a song about something just real, like the real love that, you know, makes the world beautiful. That was our second time around writing, and it was Pull You Through, and instantly, it was just magic. Alex and I will get in there with Maggie, we, we, you know, get some stuff going on and we'll take a break, you know, we'll walk outside and then we come back and she's like, I got it, I know exactly how I'm going to sing this. And you never have to be like, no, that's not the right thing. That's you. That's exactly who you are. And it's soulful. When we write with her, like, we're friends, we're, you know, we're family at this point, you know, it's like, and so in order to write a great song, you have to be vulnerable. And so we'd get into a room and we weren't strangers, like this was, we knew everything about each other, so like we could be naked in truth. And the last verse is about the part of marriage that is so profound and beautiful, but kind of sad, where till death do us part. And after we finished that song, so a couple months later, my grandparents on my father's side, who had been married for 66 years, passed away about seven weeks apart, almost as if my grandfather followed her because he had a broken heart. And we realized that we had this song that was about that full life cycle of love and the relationship and a marriage. And we just knew that that was it. That's the song we need to introduce this project with. We knew that we had something powerful. songs before that I loved so much, but that was one that I just knew. Every note, every word, every inflection of my vocal delivery was intentional, and I did it with people that I loved. I did it on my own dime. I did it on my own schedule. Mm -hmm. Like you always do I'll pull you through and to hear it on the radio for the first time was mind-blowing. I think that live thing came through, and there were so many other times where I had maybe diluted the way I was recording it because of just the conventional norms of how we record music in this city, which a lot of great music comes out of here, but maybe that wasn't the best format suited to me. And so we were like, all right, this sounds great, but we can make this even cooler. You can actually utilize the players that you love, that you work with live. Everybody, you know, we've all played with each other in some way, shape, or form. You know, we're all such a family, so to get in there, and, and what a miracle that we got to do that, because it was just glorious. The beautiful thing about this project was I just did the writing and everything, and collaborating with people because it felt right, and it just felt like it took on a life of its own, and I had the people to make it with, and that was also another reason that it was so cohesive without me having to really try and like angle all these songs together. It just was the album I had to make at that time. Kiss me till it's hazy love. Slow me down and save me love. You know we both work hard enough. So lay with me in this lazy love. <laughs> yeah, there are characters. Sarah's a great place to start. Occupations include drumming, bodyguarding it sometimes when it gets sketchy, backup singing when she lets me, one of her best friends. 
Sarah Tomek is my wing woman. She's my music director, my tour manager. She's been with me for six years. She moved her whole life from Asbury Park, New Jersey to come play with me. Modern Drummer Magazine has actually named her as one of the best drummers in the world and uh, Steven Tyler got hip to that too, so takes her out with him whenever he can. But she's incredible and she's an artist. She is one of my best friends and has seen me through so many ups and downs. In the beginning, I, I didn't understand Nashville. I didn't understand why I couldn't play on her records. And she always fought for that. She wanted her people to play on her stuff. And you know, at that point, she was just overridden by the producer, like needed those guys to come in and do this thing. And this is finally the first project. She got to have her voice and got to have what she wanted. We didn't go with session cats. We went people that we've toured years with. We went with people that wrote Don't the songs, that knew the intention. And, knew where it needed to go, and we were all there supporting each other. And I think that's why it just came out unbelievable. You can't fight that. It's, it doesn't sound like a natural record. It's, it just, it's really pure. If everything were perfect, would you be satisfied? Can you paint a picture for me? I wrote Just Getting By with my friend Chad Carlson, who I had written with before on songs like Body on Fire. And he's been married for 22 years. At that point, I had been married for one year. And I was dealing with the strains of being that newlywed couple who was trying to buy the house and trying to be financially stable and also you know, in the marriage and we were traveling a ton. And I remember we had gotten in some insignificant argument the night before. Like Austin's the best, but it's good to get in fights with your husband every now and then because then you take it to your friends and you write songs about just being there for one another and I wrote that song about that. Yeah, a white picket fence and a piece of land. It's a very apparent theme that the people around me have influenced the direction of this project and the energy behind it, but it's not just the people who are in the room making the music with me, it was also the people who supported me and encouraged me to do it on the business side and on the personal side, and one of those key influencers is my husband, Austin Marshall, who works here at Starstruck Management. And it was about three months after our wedding that we made this huge leap of faith and together left the company that we were at and came here to Starstruck with Narvel Blackstock, who took me on as an artist, who took my husband on as a manager, who let us work together and give us free reign to make this record in these beautiful studios that he's built here in Nashville. Having that kind of support and blind faith behind you from someone that I love tremendously like Austin and someone who I admire and respect like Narvel was the secret ingredient for me to just go ahead with full confidence and put this band together and do it the way that I wanted to do it. And you know, it's a wonderful thing when people just see you for who you are and let you unleash your artistry on the world and pick the people you want to make it with. Nashville has some of the best musicians in the world but I was able to amass this band just on my experiences in the last 10 years. 
Either they're members of my touring band or they're members of bands I had collaborated with before. You know, I think that just fortified my artistic vision for this was to have those people as instruments in doing it. Tom Maxwell, I played acoustic guitar and vocals on the new Maggie Rose record. And when we're on the road, I'm the two man. I play electric guitar and I'm the main harmony. Tom Maxwell is so incredibly hardworking. There's not a single gig that I take that he doesn't accompany me on. But when we are in fact home, he's a great songwriter in his own right. He's always making music and creating something beautiful and a hell of a singer. He can sing higher than me, and I hate to admit that, but anyone who comes to a show can see that. Kyle Whalen, and I play bass. So yeah, in addition to playing with Maggie, I have played with Leanne Rhymes and Billy Currington. So I've done some pop stuff, some jazz stuff. I played with my dad, and then currently played with Kelly Clarkson. Kyle Whalem is dirty. I think everyone in Nashville knows that he's one of the best bass players on this earth. Hey, I'm Vanessa Campagna, and I sing background vocals on this project. Vanessa and I met through just writing, and in the process of that, making all these awesome demos, we figured out that our voices blend really well together. And we just hit it off immediately, and we were like, this was so meant to happen. It was very clear to me that she was one of the best vocalists I'd ever met. Her range is insane. Jason Gromlick has been with me for years. He plays with the Brothers Osborne now. Jason Gromlick played uh, electric guitars and lap steel. I toured with Maggie for a number of years. It was great. I think his taste in music, his knowledge of music is probably unparalleled to most people I've ever met. He kind of helped me figure out who I was artistically. So Matt and Kevin Nolan are my family. We're all from Maryland. They were members of the Morrison Brothers Band, who I have close ties to as well. And they're old souls. Matt can play drums with the best of them, and the impact that he made with his percussion role was huge. And Kevin can play electric guitar, but he can also play keys and bass, and it was just wonderful to have them be a part of this. Susie McNeil and Andrew McTaggart, who are married, and Rebecca Lynn Howard, are part of the Loving Mary Band, which is the backing band when they play with Steven Tyler. So it just seemed like the appropriate next step to have them lend their musicianship and their vocals to this record. Caitlin Connor sang on six of the songs. She played keys on a few other songs, and she's just a musician through and through, so I needed to have someone like her in the room. Bobby Holland, my producer, was like, I have the perfect guy for this project. His name is Billy, and he just played on my session last week, and he got to the studio, and we had him and Jason Gromlick together, who are both bandmates in the Brothers Osborne band. So it kind of felt like we had these little pockets of different bands for this awesome experience. If there's one thing that everybody always says, and they, they're always like, you know, Maggie's voice is insane. Maggie can sing anything. Maggie's the best singer in Nashville. What I really, really respect about Maggie when I, when I think about her and her artistry and her um, talent, when you hear her, you hear years of prep, right? That's like the unsexiest thing to talk about when we're talking about music. It's like supposed to be natural. It is, there's that X factor, but before you can get to that, you have the raw talent that might have been discovered at an early age. But when you hear someone like Maggie who's so good, that has to have been groomed and prepared and worked at and worked at and worked at. She's got so much control of everything that has to do with her voice. It's hard to explain the, the versatility that she can sing soft and pretty. She can belt with the best of them. Her tone's amazing. Her emotion's amazing. It's all effortless. I think she has frets built into her vocal cords or something. Her pitch and her ability to deliver. I don't think I've ever heard that girl sing flat, sharp, she's just perfect. Her voice is so huge, and so when we started you know, doing this project and I was hearing the songs that were written, you know, they're just undeniably like vocal diva moments. Hand on my chest, I'm like, where do I begin? I'm done with all my friends, been thinking about it, drinking about it, can't comprehend how you Ain't no game, not throwing this
this away Not in now, don't go around No, that just ain't my thing I was always taught to play for keeps, baby Show him I love crazy And if he stays, he never gonna leave me Baby, believe me I think I found the one in you You, you, you found it in me too I don't know, I can't picture it. Okay. It's, I know it's like fast and stuff. Fuck it, try it. You can tune it up if you want to, if you want that basic vibe. Her pop stuff is amazing. Her country stuff is great. Like, the soulful stuff that she's doing now. And now she has a part of it. She's, she's writing on it. The first record, she maybe had a cut or two. And this is her voice, so she knows what she wants. She knows what sounds good. She knows the intention of where people need to be, where, where they're going. You know, them vibes, I loved what they were doing so much in town. And I figured, okay, they're just doing what they want to do. They love making music this way with Bobby Holland in the studio, live, rock and roll, unadulterated. Cool, because they were doing the throwback way of things. Cause don't you know? Half the battle of being a good producer is setting the tone for everybody to just deliver and do what they had to do, and that was never more important for me than it was on this record. Co-producing with Maggie was actually really super mega effortless. I didn't have much of a musical input on this as I would otherwise. It was more of a little gentle nudge here and there. She would write the songs, we'd do a rehearsal with the band the day before recording, and we'd kind of talk about stylistic direction, like the broad strokes, and Maggie would then do vocal rehearsals and do all the harmony arrangement. Bobby Holland as a producer, the best thing he does is just get out of the way. He's like, what a concept, you know? Let's make that guitar sound like a guitar. He was like, what an idea this would be. You, Maggie, with a microphone and a big band, we're not using tracks, we're not replacing drums, we're not replacing guitars, just get in there and, and sing the songs, you know, like Aretha would sing the songs, like Etta would sing the songs, and it just came together so naturally. The easiest thing we've ever done, Bobby did our record, then Bobby did Maggie's record. Now Bobby's doing, you know, he's doing everybody's record. I record, mix, and produce records every day. It's the best thing in the world, and normally I'm fairly skeptical of trying to capture a live energy in the studio, but I really feel like we freaking nailed it on this project. Everybody was just so there and so excited. Bobby Holland is such a purist in how he makes music. He was someone who trained me throughout the recording process of this album to let my vocal ID shine through and to let little vocal cracks happen, let room sounds bleed through the drum mics and the BGV mics. And he just makes records like the records that I grew up listening to. He just knows how to set the stage and let everybody else do what they need to do. did this live and so it wasn't just magical like one take Johnston and we were out. We did take after take after take because somebody in the band would be like, I could do better. I can make this better. And we all were like, great, I could do another pass, sure. Every single time. Maggie's like, great, let's do it, bring it on. Let's do another take. Ten more times, Maggie. <laughs> Not only playing with her live, but seeing her go through these long days in the studio. I mean, she's going for the take every time, so it's not like she's holding back at all. I can't name a whole lot of people that could do that for a full week. Yeah.